Hi there. My name is Aaron Langerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and I recently complained about changes that Autodesk is making to its Eagle PCB layout software. A whole bunch of people have told me to try out KiCad or KiCad, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, and I'm going to do that. But Georgia Tech has some educational site licenses for some pretty high-end software, so I thought it would be interesting to try some of those out as a way of gaining perspective. We have some sort of version or versions of the Siemens PADS PCB layout software, so let me try that out. If you've used PADS or the higher-end Expedition Enterprise software, I would like to hear about your experiences. I think our site license is only for certain machines, so I'm logged in remotely via Citrix. I mentioned that because I don't want you to judge the software based on any network lag you see. This would probably be more responsive on a local machine. Okay, let's see. Let me type pads. All right, so there's pads logic and pads designer. These are both schematic entry programs. I'm not really sure what the difference is. Calling this pads logic is really confusing to me because I think of the Apple logic digital audio workstation. And if you search for Siemens logic, all sorts of stuff not related to schematic entry shows up. But I did find this job posting looking for experience with pads logic at Brookhaven National Laboratory. So there's that. I have a feeling that Pads Designer is newer, but I'm not really clear on that. These both have the same version number. Anyway, let's try out Pads Logic. I could do the quick start or the tutorials. Let's just jump right in. Let's have a new something or the other. Oh, look, here's a new schematic. Great. Let's see, how do I zoom? Oh, here's a magnifying glass. That looks promising. I said click on this magnifying glass. Oh, whoa, that's wild. Oh, that went the other. Ah, okay. Whoa, okay, so if you go from upper left to lower right, you zoom out. And if you go from lower right to upper left, you zoom in. <laughs> okay, huh. Okay, let's add a part. I'm going to try to click this Add Part button and click here. No, maybe do I have to click and drag? Oh, I don't know if that did something useful. All right, let's look around. How about a TL... 072. Can't find a TL072. Uh, let's try a TL072 with a star here. No. Let's try to put TL072 here. All right. Okay, I didn't like that. Oh, I guess I need to do the searching here and then say apply. And maybe this is for if I know the exact part name. Motorola IC TL072. Okay, sure. Let's grab a TL072. Wait, <laughs> you should go away now. All right, put one here. Okay, let's take a closer look. I learned that there's a zoom shortcut of Control W to get that zoom tool. So let's do that. And let's see. Okay, if I scroll over here. Ah, so these are the two different op amps in the same package. Good. Let's see if I can find a through-hole resistor. All right, add part. Let's say resistor, apply. Okay, I didn't really expect that would work. I probably need to go poking around in the libraries. I'll be back. So I found a bunch of resistors in this miscellaneous library. Okay, the rest of these numbers like R1206, those look like those might be SMD packages. I'm not sure. I don't really use surface mount a lot myself. I'll suppose this is a through hole resistor. Yeah, let's add. I said add. Oh, okay. I guess I'm just zoomed in really far. So let me use my control W and then zoom out. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. All right, let's move apart. This looks like a move thing. Can I click and drag? No. Can I click? I click and move. Okay. Let's drop that there. Let's see if I pick it up and move it again. Ah, there it goes. All right. Let's go over here. Let me use my zoomy again. I don't, I don't have the knack of how the zoom works. Let's see. Is there a place where I can just rubber band a particular selection and then zoom in? Why can't I do that? There's got to be a way, and I'm just not seeing it. Okay, so I have figured out if I just tap it, then I can zoom in 
but I can't figure out how to just easily zoom out but stay in the same spot. Okay, let's try adding a wire. So I'll click here, maybe I'll click here, click here. There, let's see, how do I copy and paste a part? Ah, duplicate. Let me click here and I'll put a resistor here and let's go back to our wire tool. Uh, add connection is F2. Oh, I probably have to change some settings to get my function keys. Anyway, let's loop this here, loop this here, loop this here, and we'll put a feedback connection here. All right, for fun, let's duplicate this op amp. And let's see if I hit control R, that rotates. Okay, does control M, maybe I need to right click. Uh, control F and control shift F are different mirror operations. So let's see if I pick this up, Whoop, I seem to have picked up a label. I need to click on the outline. So let's see, uh, control F, control shift F. Ah, there we go. Now the positive is on top. Okay, we know how to rotate and mirror things. I don't think it would take too long to get that in muscle memory. And one thing to notice about the moving is it's very particular about moving labels around. So depending on what you click on, let's see, uh, can I move this plus here? No, it wants to move the whole thing. Move the label. Okay, that makes sense. It makes sense that you'd want to move the label, but not the plus and the minus. Let's see, can I move the two here? Okay, I can move that. And I can move the name of the part. Then I can move the whole part. I can't individually move the plus or the minus, or at least I don't think I can. But I don't think I would want to do that anyway. Maybe there's a way to do that if you want to. And I suspect you could because the plus and the minus here are in this blue, but I can't seem to find the hotspot needed to click to move it. All right. Anyway, close enough. We can do what we need to do. I can move this up here if I need to or whatever. Okay, so we can move labels around. Let's see if I want to put in part values. Can I double? Oh, that moved. Let's see. How do I actually assign values? Let's see. There's this thing here that says properties. Okay, I don't know why the tooltips aren't showing, but when I hovered over this, it said properties. So I feel like I should be able to click on it, click on this, but no, I'm in move mode still. So if anyone knows how I can click on this and change the value, let me know. Let's see, there's this Project Explorer over here. Maybe I can click on the part here and find something. Okay, there's R1 and R2. Huh, there's two things here. Oh, there's different pins. This is pin one and pin two. Shouldn't I be able to click on this and now look at the various values and change those? Okay, I'm stuck figuring out how to actually, whoop, I did not mean to do that. All right, I can't figure out how to change the value here. Huh, okay, what else we have here? I think this said swap reference designators. Okay, so that did a gate swap, I think. Yeah, the numbers changed. That did a gate swap. But if I want to copy a whole chunk of circuitry, so let me use the select tool. Let me grab this bunch here. Let me grab then the duplicate tool. Press down here. Whoop, that did not give me a lot of control over where to put it. Okay, I picked it up here. I guess I'm still in move mode or something. All right, so let's see. How do I make that permanent? I want it to look like we had above here. Oh, I just click wherever. All right, so it renumbered things nicely. Makes a lot of sense. One thing I would like to do is figure out how to expose the power pins on our chips. Let's click on components and see what we have. Let's see, there's U1, U2. How do I expose the power pins? I'm going to control click. No, properties. Ah, here we go. Let's see, rename part, change part. Oh, maybe I could do this to the resistors. Let's see, gate count, statistics, unused, signal pins, PCB decals. Oh, is this how I show the various pins? Let's see, this looks like you remove a pin. I don't want to do that. I just want to show it. Okay, if you know how to do this, let me know. Let's see, let's close here, close here. Okay, if I go here to R2, let's try... Clicking on that, I've got properties. Let's see, rename part, rename gate, change type. What about the value? Where does the value go? 
attributes. Is that what we're looking for? Let's see. Description, part number model. Oh, here we go. Let's see. We can change this to a 10K resistor. Let's say OK. Close. Ah, now it says 10K. That feels overly roundabout. There's got to be a way of just clicking on this question mark here in the right way and changing the value. If you know how to do that, let me know. Oh, I should save my design. Where did that save to? I don't know. Let me save as. Okay, let's make a PCB or at least explore the PCB editor. Let's see. There's a button here. Connect to pads layout. Connect with new session or open existing design file. I'm guessing we don't have an existing design file for this, so we'll say new session. The action cannot be completed because the other program is busy. Choose switch to to activate the busy program and correct the problem. Uh, sure. Oh, pads layout. All right, so I guess this is where we actually design our circuit board. Do we need to import something? What do we need to do here? Nets, PCB decals, components, layers. Huh. Okay, over here in the schematic capture program, it says pads layout link. Design. Yeah, I guess send netlist. Sure, send the netlist. <laughs> okay. Document. No, that's not what we're working on now. It's not default PCB. Oh, maybe that's what it named the PCB instead of giving it the name I gave the schematic file. Preferences. Okay, I guess we sent the netlist. So if we've done that, if I go over here, now do I find something? Oh, here we go. I have components. All right, let's see what we have here. Do I drag and drop? Oh, I just click on it and it's massive. It's huge. Wait, is this all of the parts on top of each other? All right, zoom out, zoom out. Okay, I was trying to figure out how to move stuff. There's this design toolbar. Let's see, select mode, move. All right, so I click on something to move it. Uh, I said move it. Why aren't you moving? Oh, good grief. No, I don't want to move the label. I want to actually move the part. I somehow moved this resistor, even though I don't know how I did it. Oh, wait, I guess it went back to select mode. Uh, ah, okay. So there's select and there's move. Select mode, I guess select. Now I have to move it. Wait, do I have to separately select something and then select move? Okay, what's the hotkey for move? There's gotta be a hotkey for move. Maybe it's M. Okay, select, let's hit M. Oh, it's a bunch of this stuff. Oh, control E is the hotkey for move. All right, so I select something, then I can control, what? No. Okay, hit something, then I control E. All right, control E is move. How do I rotate? Okay, let me select something, control E to move. Control R to rotate. Okay, so I could select this. Oh, okay. I'm moving. I guess I'm moving. That's moving. That's moving. Oh, I seem to be able to move stuff now. Okay, so I could grab this, move it, Control R, 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 rotate. I do like the fact that the footprints have a little square for number one here. Let me grab this. I'm sure I would get the hang of this. I'm just used to Eagle, and there's just a learning curve for this kind of thing. Okay, that was a bit of bumbling about. I think this is some kind of routing. All right, let's click on a... Whoa, what? Oh. Okay. Um, let me undo here. Why won't it let me undo? Control Z. Maybe I have to finish the route before it will let me undo. Now let me try to control Z. Okay, click. Click, click. That's kind of hard to see. Let's see, what if I want to switch layers? Oh, over here there's a thing called layers. Electrical layers, general layers, electrical layers. 
top, bottom. Am I doing top or bottom? Oh, okay. Click here, bottom. Ah, now I have a red trace. Now there's usually a key that you can press that will give you a more refined grid. We know how to make traces and that would probably take some practice. I don't know how much of my frustration is just the fact that it operates differently than Eagle. Okay, let's try moving apart with the traces. So this is obviously a terrible place to put this. Let's see. If I move it here, do the traces move with it? Okay, they do. And now I could say go to the bottom layer and route a trace from here to there. Or we could put this over here and then flip the resistor around. Let's see, how do I rip up a trace? Okay, I can't seem to find whatever rips up a trace. Maybe I use the route command, but I use it again. Or maybe I click on it and hit delete or something. Let's see, or maybe I hit select and then I select a trace and then I hit delete. Or I select a trace and then I use cut. No, it doesn't like that. Let's see, if you know how to rip up a trace in Siemens pads, let me know. Let's see, how do I change the width of a trace? Let's see, can I right click this? Uh, something like that. Oh, let's change this to like 16. Wrong width value. No, I want it to be 16. Okay, what about 15? We can let it be 15. <laughs> okay, you have it your way. The thing is compared with something like Eagle, Googling to try to find out how to do something, uh, there's not a lot out there, it seems. I would expect the file name when I try to save this to default, not to default, but to whatever I call the schematic file, and it's not doing that, so let me call it something else. I forget what I call the schematic file. Okay, that's enough of the PCB layout for now. Let's see. The one thing I wanted to see is, does this have an LM13700 operational transconductance amplifier in its libraries? All right, let's click on add part and we'll say 13700 apply. Okay, wait a minute. I actually want all libraries. Apply. Okay, maybe I need to use wildcards. Apply. Okay, here we go. Wait a minute, what is this? Oh, no. No, 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 no. What person thought that this symbol was a good idea? You should have the OTAs and the buffers broken out as separate things like you have with op amps. Let's see. So I have the output coming out here, and here's the control going in, and here's the diode linearization pin, and, and here are the voltage inputs, and here are the buffers. But my goodness, what a nightmare of a symbol this would be to use. Imagine trying to lay out this Korg MS-20 filter by Rene Schmitz using this horrifying symbol. Who thought this was a good idea? Uh, you would really have to make your own symbol or find another library where somebody else has made a decent 13700. So I guess it's usable and certainly people have used it. And it's a very expensive program, so it must do some awesome things for companies to be willing to spend all this money. The interface overall has kind of a Windows 98 vibe to it, but I guess it works. Now, that was Pads Logic. There's this other thing called Pads Designer, and I don't really know how it differs from Pads Logic or why you would want to use one over the other, but I'll save that for another time.